Have you ever struggled with creating a professional looking table of contents that perfectly matches your document structure? Or perhaps needed to create multiple table of contents for different portions of your document? Word's advanced TOC features can transform this tedious task into something quick and customizable. Many Word users know how to create a basic table of contents, but few take advantage of the advanced customization options available. This leads to tables of contents that don't quite match the document style, don't include the right content, or require manual updating. In this video, I'm going to show you how to master Word's advanced table of contents techniques to create professional, customized, and automatically updating tables of contents that perfectly suit your document's needs. Let's start with a document that has proper heading styles applied. I have a sample document open here with Heading 1, Heading 2, and Heading 3 styles applied throughout the document. The simplest way to create a table of contents is to place your insertion point at the position where you want the table of contents inserted. Then display the References tab of the ribbon and click the Table of Contents tool at the left side. Word offers several built-in Tables of Contents styles. I'll click on the Automatic Table 1 option right here, and then that's what is inserted within the document. Scroll back up and you can see the Table of Contents there. Word instantly created a Table of Contents based on the heading styles in the document. It includes Heading 1, Heading 2, and Heading 3 by default, with appropriate indentation to show the hierarchy. This simple table of contents looks good, but what if we want to customize it? Maybe we only want to include Heading 1 and Heading 2, or we want to change the formatting. Well, let's go ahead and remove this table of contents. I'm going to click within it, and then I will click this little down arrow right up here. And down at the very bottom, it says Remove Table of Contents. Now I'm going to go back to the References tab of the ribbon, click again on the Table of Contents option, and then choose Custom Table of Contents right down here near the bottom. That displays the Table of Contents dialog box. Here I can make several adjustments to the appearance of the Table of Contents. First, I can choose whether to show page numbers and whether to right align them or not. I can also choose a tab leader. That's the character that is used between the entry and the page number. The default is dots, but I can choose lines, dashes, or nothing at all. In this case, I'm going to stay with dots because it makes it, to my mind, easier to read that table of contents. The Formats drop-down lets me choose from several built-in table of contents styles. The default is From Template, which means it will use the styles defined in your document's template. Let's change, though, to Formal and see how that affects our table of contents. The Show Levels checkbox controls how many heading levels are included in the TOC. The default is 3, but I can change it to any number from 1 to 9. That's because that's the number of built-in heading styles that Word has. For our purposes here, let's go ahead and change this to a 2. Notice that it updated the information that's shown in the preview at the top of the dialog box. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on OK, and our table of contents is added to this document. Notice that it's more formal looking and that it includes only the first two heading levels from within the document. What if we want even more control over the table of contents? Notice that I've already removed the table of contents we did in the last section of this video. Again, on the References tab of the ribbon, we click on Table of Contents, and then we click on Custom Table of Contents one more time. That displays the Table of Contents dialog box with the same settings that we used just a moment ago. Notice in the bottom right-hand corner that there's a button that says Options. That's the one that we want to choose and that displays the Table of Contents Options dialog box. This dialog box gives us incredible flexibility, 
By default, Word builds the table of contents based on heading styles, but we can change that. We can specify exactly which styles should be included in the TOC and at what level. For example, maybe we have a custom style called Chapter Title that we've created within this document. I can scroll down through the styles that are here and notice that there's the style called Chapter Title. All I have to do is put the insertion point within the box to the right of that style and indicate that I want it to be treated as Heading Level 1 within the Table of Contents. Now, anything that's formatted with the Chapter Title style will be included in that Table of Contents at Heading Level 1. Now, perhaps we want to include the Caption style within our Table of Contents. It's right here. We would just click within it, and let's say we wanted it to be at Heading Level 4, and now it will be included within the Table of Contents. We can do this with any styles that we want to have included within our Table of Contents. We can also use the Table Entry Fields checkbox to build a Table of Contents based on TC fields that we've inserted in the document rather than styles. This is useful for creating a Table of Contents that includes only specific paragraphs regardless of their style. Most of the time, you won't be using TC fields, though. It's much easier to stick with the style-based approach. Once I have the information in the dialog box set correctly, all I would need to do is click on OK, and then we're back to the Table of Contents dialog box. Now notice that this dialog box has changed a little bit. It includes at the top an indication of what will be included in this Table of Contents. But in the bottom left corner of this dialog box, we can no longer indicate the number of heading levels that we want included because we've specified custom styles to be within that table of contents. Word recognizes that and removes that option. With the information all set the way that I want, all I would have to do at this point is click on OK, and that table of contents will be placed within my document. Now let's talk about another powerful feature, creating multiple tables of contents in the same document. This is useful for long documents like books or reports where you might want a brief table of contents at the beginning and more detailed ones for each portion of a document. The easiest way to insert such a table of contents is to use bookmarks. I have no table of contents within this document right now, so I'm going to insert a table of contents at the very beginning. We'll go down here to Customize Table of Contents. I'm not going to have it be formal. I'll have it be from the template. And now I'm going to click on OK. And we have our Table of Contents, just like we did earlier in this video. But now, where I want my secondary Table of Contents, I just need to scroll down through the document. Let's say that we want our secondary Table of Contents here in this portion of the document. All that I have to do is select all of the information that I want to be within this section or all of the text within the document that has headings that I want to be in this table of contents. So I'm going to go down a ways here in this document. And we want everything within this highlighted area to be in this secondary table of contents. Now all I have to do is jump over to the Insert tab of the ribbon, and I'm going to create a bookmark. Notice the Word has a whole bunch of bookmarks within this document already. These bookmarks were added automatically by Word. We don't need to be concerned with them too much. I'm just going to create a bookmark called Part 2. So all I have to do is type the name of the bookmark, and then I click on the word Add. Now I have that bookmark within the document. If you want to know more about working with bookmarks, I'll include a link in the upper right corner to a video that does a deep dive into them. For now, though, I've added this single bookmark, and we're ready to create the second table of contents within this document. All I have to do now is go back up to the beginning of this section that I highlighted just a moment ago and place my insertion point at the position where I want this secondary TOC inserted. 
Here I can create a table of contents just like we did a few moments ago. I click on References, Table of Contents, Custom Table of Contents, and say OK. It asks me if I want to replace the table of contents that I had before. I'm going to go ahead and say no because we want a secondary one in there. It has now inserted this second table of contents within the document. This table of contents is exactly like the other table of contents at this point, but we're going to fix that here in just a moment. All I need to do is position the insertion point within the table of contents. You can see that it's blinking right there on the last line of the table of contents. And then I'm going to go ahead and press Alt F9. Notice that the table of contents disappeared. Well, it didn't actually disappear. What we did is we told Word to display the field codes within this document instead of the results of the field codes. That's what the Alt plus F9 shortcut key does. So we're going to go back up to where we were and notice that all we can see is the field code that creates that table of contents. Now, if you do this in your own documents, don't be surprised if your field code looks a bit different. That's okay if that's the case. The name of the field is TOC, and that is followed by various switches that modify what the field code does. Each switch begins with a backslash. You want to place the insertion point within the field code braces. Notice that it's right after the slash U switch, and then I'm going to leave a space in between there. Now I want to add a switch that affects how this table of contents is generated. I'm going to type a backslash, followed by a B, a space, and then just like that. That slash B indicates that I want this table of contents to apply only to the bookmark that is called Part 2. You'll remember that that's a section of the document that we selected just a little while ago. Now I can press Alt plus F9 again, and Word inserts the uh, tables of, uh, I'm sorry, the table of contents within this document. We have to go back and search for it and find it here. This is the one at the very beginning. You can see that it's page one that's shown down on the status bar, but we want the one that's shown in page six of this document or further down in the document. This is the one that's right here. Now this particular table of contents still looks exactly like the table of contents that we had just a moment ago. That's because we haven't updated the table of contents yet. We've changed the switch, but we haven't told Word to update it to reflect the addition of that new switch. All we have to do is have the insertion point within this field that we want to update, and then we press the F9 key. It asks us if we want to update the entire table of contents or the page numbers only. We're going to choose to update the entire table, click on OK, and now notice that we have a table of contents that has just those headings that were within that bookmark that we defined just a little while ago. Now you can place as many tables of contents as you want in your document. The key is to first make sure you define bookmarks for each portion of the document for which you want a table of contents, and second, modify the field codes used for each of the tables of contents. There's one last important thing to know about tables of contents, is that they don't update automatically when you change your document. If you add, remove, or change headings, or if page numbers change, you need to update the table of contents. To do so, click anywhere within it, and you can then press F9 to update that table of contents, just like we did a moment ago. Word then gives you the two options that you saw update page numbers only, or update entire table. If you've made changes that affect page numbers, like adding or removing content without changing headings, choose the update page numbers only. If you've added, removed, or changed headings, then choose update entire table. The table of contents is then updated to reflect all the changes in the document. Advanced table of contents techniques in Word give you incredible control over how your document is organized and navigated. 
Whether you need a simple table of contents or multiple section-specific tables of contents, Word has the tools to create them automatically and keep them updated. Remember to use proper heading styles throughout your document, customize your TOC to match your document styles and needs, and update your TOC whenever you make significant changes to your document. With these techniques, you'll create professional-looking tables of contents that can impress your readers and save you hours of manual formatting. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, you might consider signing up for the free Word Tips newsletter. Information is in the notes just below this video. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me today.